But nowadays, thanks to the contraptions invented by these English beings, it has become, again in the words of our esteemed Mulla Nasser Eddin, just roses, roses. The contemporary beings scarcely need to make any effort whatsoever in order to destroy completely the existence of beings like themselves, sitting quietly in what they call their smoking rooms, they can destroy, just to pass the time, as it were, dozens and sometimes even hundreds of others like themselves. Now, I might as well also tell you a little about the direct descendants of the beings of the Greco-Roman civilization. The descendants of the beings of the once, great, and powerful community of priests still exist today and also have their own independent community, but they now have scarcely any significance whatever for the other independent communities there. They no longer do what their ancestors did, who were consummate specialists in cooking up all kinds of fantastic sciences. And if a contemporary Greek were to produce a new science, the beings of other communities would not pay the slightest attention to it. And they would pay no attention to it, simply because that community has not at the present time enough guns and ships to be what is called an authority for the other contemporary beings there. But although these descendants of the former great Greeks, namely, the Greeks of the present day, have lost the knack of being an imaginary authority for other free-brained beings there, they have adapted themselves perfectly on almost all the continents and islands to keep in what are called shops, where, without any haste, slowly and gently, they trade in sponges, Alba, Rahat Lokom, and so forth, and sometimes, Persian dried fruit, not forgetting, of course, the dried fish called Kekel. As for the descendants of the famous Romans, they too continue to rise and exist and, although they no longer even bear the name of their ancestors, they still call the chief center of their community, Rome. The beings of the community established by the descendants of those former shepherds, who later became the great Romans, are now called Italians. Scarcely anything has been inherited from their ancestors by these Italians except that specific being impulse which the ancient Romans were the first to crystallize in their presences, and which gradually infected all the other three brain beings on that planet. At the present time the beings of that community of Italy led a calm and peaceful existence, doing nothing more than unostentatiously inventing new forms of their harmless and very innocent what is called, macaroni. Nevertheless, certain beings of that contemporary Italy have inherited from their ancestors one special and very peculiar property called, giving pleasure to others. However, they manifest this inherited need of giving pleasure, not toward beings like themselves but toward beings of other forms. In all fairness it must be stated that this special property passed to beings of various parts of present-day Italy and became ingrained in their nature not so much from the great Romans as from their ancestors of considerably later epochs, that is to say, from the time when they began propagating among beings, both of their own and of neighboring weaker communities, the teaching, already distorted for their egoistic purposes, of a certain genuine sacred messenger from above.
the present time the beings of various parts of Italy manifest this property of giving pleasure to others in the following way. When they destroy the existence of the quadruped beings called sheep, and goats, whose planetary bodies they use for their first food, they do not do so all at once, but in order to give them this pleasure, they do it slowly and gently over a period of many days that is one day they take off one leg then a few days later a second leg then the third and so on for as long as the sheep or goat still breathes and sheep and goats can breathe for a long time without these parts of their common presence because although these parts do not participate in the main functions of the taking in of cosmic substances required for existence, they do participate in those functions that engender in all beings the impulses giving self-sensations. After what I have just said, there seems to be no need to say more about the descendants of those Romans, who were once so great and so menacing for the other communities there. Now let us talk about that particularly maleficent invention of the ancient Greeks which is practiced today by the beings of the community of England, and which is called, sport. Single quote. These beings of contemporary England, who make the most use of this particularly harmful invention of the ancient Greeks, have thereby added one more surefire factor for shortening the duration of their existence, already trifling enough without this furthermore, experiencing in their turn the greatness of their community, they have now become authorities for the three brain beings of other communities, and having made the practice of this invention their ideal and its propagation their aim, they are infecting by every possible means the beings of all the other large and small communities of that ill-fated planet. The cause of this serious misconception was the disappearance from the common presence of your favorites of the possibility of the crystallization in them of those factors which actualize logical mentation in three brain beings. And since they lack this logical mentation, all of them, almost without exception, except the statements of certain candidate Hasnamus as affirming that they can obtain something very beneficial for themselves through sport, and now believing these assertions with all their presence, and in the hope of obtaining this benefit, they give themselves up entirely to this sport. None of these unfortunates know, or probably will ever realize, not only that this maleficent sport of theirs brings them nothing beneficial but that, as I have just told you, owing to this sport alone, they shorten still further the duration of their existence, already sufficiently trifling without this. So that you may represent more clearly to yourself and understand why the duration of their existence is still further diminished on account of this sport, it is now opportune to explain to you, as I have promised, the difference between the duration of being existence according to the Philasnatamian principle and according to the principle of Etoclonauts. that when I explain to you how these favorites of yours define the flow of time, I told you that when the organ Kundabuffer with all its properties was removed from their presence, and, in conformity with the Phileasentamian principle, they began to have the same duration of existence as all normal free brain beings arising everywhere in our universe. They also should without fail have existed until their second being body, the question body, had been completely coated in them and perfected in reason up to the sacred, Ishmech.
but later, when they began existing in a manner more and more unbecoming to three-brained beings and entirely ceased to actualize in their presence the being parked all duty forcing by great nature, which alone enables three-brained beings to acquire the data for coding their higher parts, and when because of this the quality of their radiations failed to respond to the demands of the most great common cosmic trogo-autodocratic process, then great nature, in order to restore the equilibrium of vibrations, was compelled gradually to adapt the duration of their existence to the principle called Etoplanauts, which in general determines the duration of existence of one-brained and two-brained beings that have not the same possibilities as three-brained beings, and are therefore incapable of actualizing in their presence the partial duty foreseen by nature. According to this principle, the duration of their being existence and also the entire content of their common presence generally depend upon the results arising from the following seven factors in their surroundings. 1. Heredity in general. 2. Conditions and environment at the moment of conception. 3. The combined radiations of all the planets of their solar system during their formation in the womb of their productress. 4. The level of being manifestation of their producers during the period in which they themselves are preparing for responsible age. 5. The quality of being existence of the beings in the immediate surroundings. 6. The quality of what are called teleocrimalnicnian thought waves formed in the atmosphere around them, also during the period of their preparation for responsible age, that is, the sincerely manifested good wishes and actions of beings of the same blood, and finally, seven the quality of their own, being egoplastatory, that is, their being efforts for the transubstantiation in themselves of all the data for obtaining objective reason. The chief particularity of existence according to this principle of etoplanots is that in the presence of beings existing according to it, depending on the enumerated seven exterior factors, there are crystallized in there, being localizations, or, as your favorites say, in their brains, which are the central locations of the sources of manifestation of all the separate independent parts of their common presence, what are called bobbincandelnos, that is to say, a certain something that gives to these localizations, or brains, a definite quantity of possible associations or experiencings. And so, my boy, because these contemporary favorites of yours, the three brain beings of the planet Earth, now arise only according to the principle of etoplanots, there are crystallized in their brains, from the moment of conception up to the age of responsible beings, these, Bob and Candelnosts, with very definite possibilities for actualizing the processes of association. To throw more light on this question and help you understand it better, and not to waste time on explanations concerning the very essence and the forms of functioning of these cosmic actualizations called Bob and Candelnos, which are lawfully crystallized in the localizations, or brains, of beings who exist only on the basis of etoplanots, I will take as an example those, artificial jam tester Noki, which your favorites also have and which they call, mechanical watches. As you already know, although these, artificial jam tester Noki, or, mechanical watches, are of different systems, they are nevertheless all constructed on the same principle of the tension or pressure of an unwinding, spring. One system of 
jam tester note he contains a spring exactly calculated and set so that its tension while unwinding will last 24 hours. Another system has a spring set for a week, a third for a month, and so on. Bob and Candel notes, in the brains of beings who exist only according to the principle of etoclonauts correspond to the springs in mechanical watches of different systems just as the duration of the movement of mechanical watches depends upon the springs they contain, so the duration of the existence of beings depends exclusively on the Bob and Candel notes formed in their brains at the time of their arising and during the process of their further formation. Just as the spring of a watch is wound up for a definite length of time, so these beings can associate and experience only to the extent of the possibilities for experiencing put into them by nature while these Bob and Candel notes are being crystallized in their brains. They can associate and consequently exist just so long, no more, no less. As mechanical watches can run only for as long as the spring has been wound up, so the beings in whose brains these Bob and Candel notes are crystallized can experience, and consequently can exist, only until the Bob and Candel notes formed in their brains, in accordance with the mentioned seven exterior factors, are used up. And so, my boy, when the results of Park Dog Duty were no longer obtained in the presence of your favorites, and the duration of their existence began to depend exclusively on the results of the mentioned seven accidental exterior factors, then thanks to all this the length of their existence, especially among contemporary beings, became extremely variable. At the present time, it may range from one of their minutes up to 70 or 90 of their years. And so, owing to all I have just said, no matter how your favorites exist, and no matter what measures they adopt, and even if they were to put themselves, as they say, in a glass case, as soon as the contents of the Bob and Candel notes crystallized in one or another of their brains is used up, that brain immediately ceases to function. The difference between mechanical watches and your contemporary favorites is that in watches there is only one spring, whereas your favorites have three of these independent Bob and Candel notes. And these Bob and Candel notes in all three independent localizations of three brain beings in general have the following names. The first the Bob and Candel most of the thinking center, the second the Bob and Candel most of the feeling center, and the third the Bob and Candel most of the moving center. Nowadays it frequently happens that the process of the sacred, Rastuarno, in your favorites takes place, by thirds, that is to say, they, die in parts, this also proceeds from the fact that, arising and being formed only according to the principle of etoclonauts and existing in harmoniously, they use up the contents of the Bob and Candel notes of their three separate, independent brains disproportionately, and hence they frequently undergo such a horrible, dying, as is not proper to three brain beings. During my stay among them I personally very often witnessed their dying by thirds. And this can take place because even though the Bob and Candel most of one of their brains may be entirely used up, the beings themselves, especially the contemporary ones, sometimes continue to exist for quite a long time. For instance, it often happens that, owing to their particularly abnormal existence, 
the contents of one of their bobbin candelnosts are used up and, if it is the case of the moving center or, as they themselves call it, the spinal cord, then although this free brain being continues to think, enter, feel, he has already lost the possibility of intentionally directing the parts of his planetary body. Here it is interesting to note that, when in one of your contemporary favorites a part finally dies in this way, there, as their listeners, or, as they are called, physicians, look upon such a death as unquestionably a disease, and begin to treat it with every kind of wise acting already proper to them, and they give these supposed diseases all sorts of names sounding like an ancient language utterly unknown to them called, Latin. Single quote. These widespread diseases there have such names as the following, hemiplegia, paraplegia, paralysis progressiva, paralysis essentialis, tabes dorsalis, paralysis agitans, sclerosis disseminata, and so on and so forth. Such a death by thirst has become particularly frequent during the last two centuries on the planet Earth which has taken your fancy and this occurs to those of your favorites of all communities there, both large and small, who, either because of their professions, or because of one of the passions that arise in beings on account of the same abnormally established conditions of their ordinary being existence have more or less used up the contents of the bobbin candelnosts of one or another of their being brains. For instance, a one-third death through exhaustion of the bobbin candelnost of the moving center or spinal cord often occurs among those terrestrial beings who give themselves up to that occupation practice by the beings belonging to the community of England, thanks to the maleficent invention of the ancient Greeks now called, sport. You will clearly understand the nature of the pernicious consequences of that harmful occupation when I tell you that, during my stay among those favorites of yours, I once devoted a special section of my statistics to clarifying for myself how long those three brain beings can exist who take up the profession of wrestling, and never once did I find a single one who had existed longer than 49 of their years. And a one-third death through the premature using up of the bottom candle most of the feeling center occurs there for the most part among those beings who become by profession what are called representatives of art. Most of these terrestrial professionals, especially the contemporary ones, at first follow with one or another form of what is called psychopathy, and later, because of their psychopathy, they so to say intentionally, learn to feel, thereafter, repeatedly experiencing this abnormal being impulse, they gradually use up the contents of the bottom candle most of their feeling center and, by thus disharmonizing the tempo of their own common presence, bring themselves to that peculiar end which is not often met with even among them. It is worth mentioning here, by the way, that the one-third death through the feeling center also occurs among your favorites thanks to a very original form of psychopathy called altruism and as regards the premature partial death through the bobbin candle most of the thinking center this kind of death has been occurring more and more frequently in recent times among your favorites this partial death through the thinking center chiefly befalls those favorites of yours who try to become, or have already become, scientists of new formation, and also those who are addicted to reading what are called, 
books, and newspapers. Single quote. As a result of reading superfluously and associating only by thoughts, the contents of the Bob and Candelmos of the thinking center of those three brain beings are exhausted before the contents of the Bob and Candelmos of their other being centers. And so, my boy, all these misfortunes, such as the shortening of the duration of their existence and many other maleficent consequences, occur to your favorites only because they have not yet learned about the cosmic law called the equilibration of differently sourced vibrations. Single quote. If only such an idea would occur to them and they were to carry on their usual wise actings with it, they would then perhaps discover one very simple secret. I am sure that somebody would stumble on this secret, because, in the first place, it is simple and obvious, and in the second place, they discovered it long ago and have often put it to practical use. They even apply this simple secret to those mechanical watches we took as an example in connection with the duration of their existence. In all the mechanical watches of various systems, they use this simple secret in a corresponding part of the general mechanism of the watch for regulating the tension of the spring, and it is called, it seems, the regulator. By means of this regulator, it is possible, for instance, to make the mechanism of a watch that is wound up for 24 hours go for a whole month or, on the contrary, run down in 5 minutes. In the common presence of every being existing merely on the basis of etoplanos, there is something similar to the regulator in a mechanical watch, and this something is called Buran Sampi, which means not to give oneself up to the associations resulting from the functioning of one brain alone. But even if your favorites should hit upon this simple secret, it would change nothing they still would not make the necessary being efforts, accessible even to contemporary beings, whereby they can, through the foresight of nature, acquire the capacity for what is called, harmonious association, which alone creates the energy for active being existence in the presence of every free brain being and consequently in them also but at the present time. This energy is elaborated in the presence of your favorites only during their quite unconscious state, that is, during what they call, sleep. But since your favorites, especially the contemporary ones, constantly exist passively under the direction of only one of the separate spiritualized parts of their common presence, and constantly manifest themselves exclusively in accordance with the factors for negative properties also lawfully arising in their common presence, there proceeds in them that same disproportionate expenditure of the con. of their various Bob and Candelnos, that is to say, they always experience the possibilities of action, placed in them by nature according to law, though only in one or two of their brains, and in consequence of this, the contents of one or two of their Bob and Candelnos are prematurely exhausted, whereupon, just like mechanical watches in which the spring has run down or the force of the regulator has weakened, they cease to act. Sometime later, I shall explain to you why it is that when beings who exist according to the principle of Edoplanots manifest under the direction of only one or two of their spiritualized sources, and not harmoniously with all three combined and in agreement, 
the particular brain in which there has been an excess of associations is prematurely used up and consequently dies, and I shall also explain why, owing to this.